Thinking of updating your existing countertops? Then call the countertop specialists at Fox Tops All. Fox Tops All is the leading provider of premium custom manufactured countertops, which we fabricate to your specs. No matter how large the project, Fox Tops All believes in exemplary customer service from the moment you walk through our doors until the last installed surface meets your satisfaction. Come visit our Mooresville showroom today and see for yourself why Fox Tops All. Welcome to Stressless, the recliner that lets you create your own personal comfort zone. With a smooth reclining glide system that eases your body into the perfect position for total relaxation. Plus full lumbar support and a headrest that adjusts automatically. Stressless. Relax your body. Free your mind. Come. Experience Stressless at Enbow Furniture in Cornelius. Sports Night is shot on location at Woods on South. Experience a one-of-a-kind Charlotte destination with Carolina cuisine created by celebrity chef Marvin Woods. Woods on South, 2100 South Boulevard. Hi everyone, I'm Bill Rosinski. Welcome to another edition of Sports Night. We're at Woods on South. It's the former South End Brewery. We're going to talk football in this first segment with a former Carolina Panther. Later on, Charles Chandler, one of the fine writers from the Charlotte Observer, will join us. When you think of the Carolina Panthers and their early success back in 1996, uh, they drafted a kid in 95 out of Washington. He eventually became one of their fine starting linemen and uh, helped that team get to the NFC Championship game in 96. Frank Garcia joins us on the show. Frank, good to see you. Yeah, thanks. Good to be here. Seems like it wasn't that long ago, wasn't it, man? Oh, yeah. I, I think back to those to that team in 96 and with the characters you had on it uh, that that was quite a ride that was a fun season it's, it seems like just yesterday but so much has happened since then you know Sam Mills um, you know going and passing uh, you know the guys we had Kevin Green uh, Lamar Lathan I mean just a good good group of guys Brett Maxey uh, you, you remember it like it was yesterday and it, it happened so fast you know you grow up and eventually you know have kids and, and <laughs> yeah. uh, you know all that gets passed and here we are today yeah, and it's funny because I think if you've been a Panther fan since the beginning and you go through a season like this team is going through right now, you kind of appreciate those years that you had to get back. Uh, all that early success, you appreciate a little bit more now, don't you? There's no question. You, you have the success early as a, a franchise, and then you go through the struggles, and you know, kind of like what they're going through now, and, and you, you feel for the guys. You know what they're going through. You know it's tough. Um, you know, it's hard to go to practice and, and to work every day because, you know, what the outside people are saying. Everybody on the outside is trying to tear you apart. Your coach is not going to be here from, uh, you know, you got to go because your offensive line stinks. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah. there's all those things that happen that uh, right. you know, outsiders looking in. And you just got to, you know, find a way as a, a group to, to bond together and, and realize that you're there, uh, you know, for a common purpose, and that's to win football games. Talk about 96. Did, uh, when did you get the feel? The team started 3-0 that year. You had a big win over San Francisco. Uh, lost to Jacksonville on the road. That was Steve Berline got boot, had the heck boot out of him in that game. We went back to Jacksonville. 5-4 uh, and four at one point. You have a big team meeting. You run the table, get to the NFC. When did you feel that that team was, was good enough to be a division champ? You know, I, I don't know if we ever felt that way. Um, we, we felt that, you know, we're going to go out the, at, after this game by game. Um, and, and you just, you, you started building momentum. Guys started making plays. You know, Willie Green on the outside, Wesley yeah. Walls, um, you, know, you know, Steve coming in for Kerry when he got hurt. Kerry coming back. You know, our line started gelling a little bit. Um, you know, Anthony Johnson going out there and, and, and making plays. And we, we weren't fancy. But, you know, but the biggest thing about that was our, our team leadership. Sam Mills, uh, Lamar Lathan, Eric Davis, and you've know, gone and on and on mm -hmm. about these past greats for the Panthers. And, and they're the kind of guys, they're the, they were the glue of that right. team that once that team meeting took place, we kind of said, hey, we're, 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 get, we're on the right track. Uh, you know, Dom Capers talked about riding the ship, as you remember, and we all just jumped aboard and, and uh, took a ride. Talk about the game at San Francisco, because that was uh, the game that really solidified this team as the top team in the division. And I remember as that game was getting ready to start, I think you guys were either out for the f coin flip or something, and you like, William Floyd was like dancing around, you kind of shoved him. I remember seeing this on the highlight film. 
that was one of the most emotional games I think you guys played that year. There's no question. And, and you, you, we started, you know, getting that rhythm and, and that feel. And they were, the, you know, the, the champs. They were the defending champ. And we went into their place, and, and they weren't, you know, it was a home field. I mean, but, you know, as a, as a football player and, a, and as a competitive guy, you always want to protect your home turf. And that's what they were doing. And we were there, we, we were there to take that from them. And, and emotions were flying, as you said. And, and, you know, they had some, you know, spunky guys, William Floyd, as you know. And, and the guy, Ken Norton Jr., was, uh, you know, a, a, one of those big right. talkers. And, and uh, you know, we just got after it. That's, you know, the way football was back then. And you went out there and you played hard. And, and you, you know, you spoke, uh, you, know, you talked a little <laughs> junk. <laughs> When you got beat by Green Bay, oh, let me hold. Let me let me stop that. Before we get to that, let's talk about the Dallas playoff game because I talked to Greg Cragen about this about a year ago, and he he told me he said, you know what, Bill, I played in Denver for a long time, and the crowds there were great. Uh, everybody talked about the the noise that the Denver fans made. He said that night was the loudest crowd. I've ever heard. This is coming from a guy who played in Denver. What do you remember about that night against Dallas? Well, I remember, you know, the same, same kind of thing is that, you know, you, you get in that zone and, and, you know, you have guys across from you, you know, Russell Maryland and, and you know, Norton Jr. I think he might have been with the Cowboys at the point. Um, and, and, you know, going out there and, and defending your home turf, saying we, were, we had to win one game at home where we hadn't lost all year to be in the conference championship against, you know, either Green Bay or wherever they played that year. But, you know, we just kept thinking, take it one game at a time. Uh, you know, Deion Sanders got hurt, Michael Irving got hurt. You know, they came in here with this vaunted, you know, offensive line and, and uh, you know, Emmett Smith and, and Moose Johns and all these guys. And we were out there playing with them and not just playing with them, dominating. And, and the crowd played a big factor in that. Being at home, you know, even f since game two when we played the 49ers, um, you know, being behind us, it was something special we had that year. And, and you see, you know, throughout the history of the Panthers, and everybody gives, you know, grief to the, the, the fans. All they want is something to cheer about. If, mm -hmm. if the players can go out there and play hard and give them something to cheer about, they'll show up and cheer. Did you realize after 96, after losing to Green Bay in the uh, – NFC Championship game that it would kind of unravel as quickly as it did. No, we thought I, I, you really didn't think that. You, no, none of us had that feeling. Um, but it's funny, you know, when you're a professional athlete, you think that you're, you know, atop the world. I mean, sometimes you fit, you feel like you're invincible. You feel like you're better. You know, we got old real quick. Um, we thought we were a couple players away from taking that next level and and, and, and taking that next step. So we bring Sean Gilbert in and. Mm. Um, you know, we all know how that worked out, and it, you know, kind of backfired a little bit because we, on us, because we had to give away a couple of draft choices, uh, first round draft choices, and, and, and I don't know if, if you can really say we're going to take a you know a home run swing each time. I think you have to you know hit base hits you know with your draft, and and uh, you know we were close and we felt we were close, and the NFL is a funny thing. I mean, there's a lot of parity in this in this league, and. You got to you, you, when, when you don't have the talent that a lot of other teams had. We didn't have a lot of talent. We had had a lot of hardworking, you know, guys that got old, and and uh, you know that's what happens. You just you, you fall down. You got to you got to you know start over and, and do it again. That team never lost a game at home. This year's edition has yet to win at home. In fact, they trace it back over a calendar year from the last time they won a home game. Uh, what's your take on this year's team? Well, I think Jake DeLome, um, for the last couple of years, has masked a lot of the problems that the Panthers have had. I mean, obviously they have, you know, Steve Smith, who's a great, you know, receiver, ultimate competitor. Um, you know, they have a decent tight end, uh, you know, Jeff King we had on tonight. And, and you know, he, he's an up-and-coming guy. But, you know, you look at other guys, it's, it's the continuity and consistency that they're lacking right now. And I think that's, when you look back to the 96 team, we didn't let each other down. And I don't know if they have that same sense of, continuity that we had back there where you know it's an important thing for us to come here and win and give our fans something to cheer about you've since retired uh, you've been a charlatan for for quite a while and you're coaching at, at charlotte catholic now yeah it's uh, we, we've uh, you know had a very successful three-year run since i've been there and and this year we just beat hickory in the uh, quarterfinals and now we're on to the semifinals uh, to play tc roberson um, and I tell you what, you know, there's nothing better 
you know, since we can't play now, those who can't play either coach or, you know, do something else. But, you know, we to go out there and, and see those kids when they get it, I mean, that's it, it brings the biggest satisfaction to me when I tell a kid, okay, this is the way you should do it, and the light clicks, and all of a sudden, you know, they, they realize, okay, I can do it. And, you know, that's that's what you go out there for. I mean, it's, it's great to be around football. And, uh, you know, Jim Odo there has done a tremendous job, you know, putting, you know, the staff together, and, and the kids are, are unbelievable, and that's what makes it fun. Had you ever envisioned yourself being a high school coach? Um, always a coach. I don't know at what level, and I still don't know at what level I want to pursue. You know, as we all know, as, you know, the, the higher up the ranks you get, the more time that you need to, 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 to pursue, you know, what, you, what you're going out there for. And, and you know, high school kind of gives me a good mix between family and, and, right. uh, and, and coaching. And, you know, my family is very important to me. I love spending time with them, being able to watch their games and watch them mature and, and grow up into young adults. So tell us about your family. Uh, I have a daughter, Grace, who's eight, and a son, Garrett, who's five. And uh, my, my wife, Sarah, is, you know, she's the rock that holds us all together. Without her, obviously, we, we, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And, and uh, you know, I'd probably be off some straight path. But she's kept us all together. And, um, you know, they're great. Uh, they're in athletics. They're doing well in school. And, um, you know, because of her, you know, we're all, we're all down that straight, narrow path. Now, you grew up in Arizona. Uh, and I know you ended up playing out there for a while after you left the Carolina Panthers, but you settled back here in Charlotte. Is this, is this where you wanted to call home? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, my roots are here. My wife's family's from, you know, the Carolinas. Uh, we've, been a, we've been to St. Louis. We've been to Arizona. I've been to Seattle. I've been to a lot of places around the nation, and we couldn't find the, the you know, family atmosphere and community that we had here in this area. I mean, it's, it's bar none the best in the country. To be in the Carolinas, you love it, uh, I love it, and my family loves it. Charities, didn't you just do something? Yeah, uh, Juvenile Diabetes Foundation, yes. I've been a part of that for about 10 years. We started uh, you know, a golf tournament, and, and they just had a gay list last, last uh, you know, month. And um, in 2005, uh, we had a 10-year plan to raise $20 million. In two years, we're at $10 million already. So uh, you know, the, the Carolina chapters has taken off. Uh, Pat McFeely has done a great job, kind of head, you know, spearheading the whole thing. Uh, and and if, you, if you want to get involved, we have tournaments all the time. Uh, JDRF.org, check it out. It's it's a great great charity. Well, before we say goodbye, let's let's get the kids up here. Maybe you can introduce them to the uh, audience. You can sit in Dad's lap and just look into that camera right over there. I'll I'll lean over this way. You don't have to get a <laughs> shot of me. So introduce the troops. This is my daughter Gray. She's eight. She's a uh, uh, second grader at Haven uh, Elementary, and this is my son Garrett. He's five, and uh, he's a good little soccer player. How about now, golf? I, I know you can play. What about what about the kids? Well, you got they're them out yet? there. Yeah, they're out there, and uh, you know she she has other interests as far as um, not golfing, but he goes out there every once in a while and uh, hits it around hits it around the course with me, and it's a lot of fun spending time with your kids. And you know that's I was I was very lucky, very blessed to you know make a little bit of money in the NFL, and you know now I can give back to my charities and and spend time with my kids. Frank, always good to see you. It brings back a lot of great memories for me when I think back to those early years. Thanks for spending some time with us. Uh, same here, Bill. Pleasure seeing you. Frank Garcia with us. We come back. Charles Chandler from the Charlotte Observer. Stay with us as we continue on Sports Night. Sports Night is brought to you by Inbo Furniture, Scandinavian and Contemporary Design, Fox Tops All, the Countertop Specialist. Call now and ask about our starting line selections. And by What's on South, 2100 South Boulevard. Thinking of updating your existing countertops? Then call the Countertop Specialists at Fox Tops All. Fox Tops All is a leading provider of premium custom manufactured countertops which we fabricate to your specs. No matter how large the project, Fox Tops All believes in exemplary customer service from the moment you walk through our doors until the last installed surface meets your satisfaction. Come visit our Mooresville showroom today and see for yourself why Fox Tops All. You don't have to be this fit to read Charlotte Health and Fitness Magazine, but let Charlotte Health and Fitness Magazine help you maximize your active lifestyle. Every month, CHF readers enjoy features on the best places to get fit, look great, and have fun. CHF is now available for home or office delivery. For a limited time, visit chfmag.com 
and sign up to receive your complimentary copy today. Welcome to Stressless, the recliner that lets you create your own personal comfort zone with a smooth reclining glide system that eases your body into the perfect position for total relaxation, plus full lumbar support and a headrest that adjusts automatically. Stressless, relax your body, free your mind. Come, experience Stressless at Enbow Furniture in Cornelius. Sports Night is brought to you by Embo Furniture, Scandinavian and Contemporary Design. Box Tops All, the countertop specialist. Call now and ask about our starting line selections. And by Woods on South, 2100 South Boulevard. Welcome back. Uh, we continue with Sports Night. And uh, before I introduce my next guest, a blatant plug for a book I've written. Uh, and it's called Bill Rosinski's Tales of the Carolina Panthers. And it's about my 10 years as the voice of the football team and really chronicles the beginning of the franchise, what it was like the first couple of seasons as the team ended up going to the NFC Championship game uh, through the years of Dom Capers, George Seifert, uh, the arrival of John Fox, and uh, it's at uh, local bookstores, Borders, Barnes and Noble, uh, and I hope you'll pick up a copy of it. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, I wrote it with Pat Yasinskis, who's the beat writer for the Charlotte Observer, uh, who covers the Carolina Panthers, and joining us now on the show, another fine writer, used to be a beat writer for the Carolina Panthers,